So guys, before I do an in-depth camera tutorial on the Z Fold 6, I want you guys to make a couple of important changes to the camera settings, which is gonna improve the overall camera experience and the picture quality of your Z Fold 6. Okay, so the first set of settings we are gonna change are not available through the built-in camera app. So what you will have to do is open the Galaxy Store on your Z Fold 6, then search and download an app called Camera Assistant. So here it is and this is a part of Good Luck. And as you can see, this app gives you access to a bunch of features and camera settings that are actually hidden from you. So the first setting you should enable is the 2x crop zoom shortcut. So this is gonna add a dedicated 2x zoom button to the camera UI. Now as you might know, the Z Fold 6 does not have a 2x telephoto camera. So how does this work? Well, when you take a photo with the 2x telephoto option, the phone uses a re crop of the high resolution 50 megapixel sensor. And the quality will be as good as if the photo was taken with an actual 2x telephoto camera. So to demonstrate, let us first take a photo without any zoom. And then we're gonna take another photo with the 2x re setting. And you'll see that the photo taken at 2 times zoom is as good as the photo taken without any zoom. So this feature is awesome and I think everyone should have it enabled. Now this is something that I've made a video on quite recently but the next setting you should enable is the prioritize focus over speed. So right now we've got the setting disabled and you'll see that the camera takes a photo even if the frame is out of focus or not completely set. As you can see that results in a blurry photo. This is because when you've got the setting disabled, the priority will be to quickly take a photo rather than wait for the camera to set the focus. I don't think this is a good idea because this is gonna result in many people taking blurry photos. But fortunately for us, we can change how the focus system works in the camera assistant. So once you switch on prioritize focus over speed, the camera is gonna wait until the focus is properly set and then it will take a photo, which will eventually result in better quality photos. But do keep in mind this adds a bit of shutter lag. But you do end up with photos with proper focus. And this setting is even more important on the Z Fold 6 because the Fold, unlike the S24 series, does not come with a laser autofocus system. So having this setting enabled is gonna make a lot of difference. Now, if you change the resolution to 50 megapixels, you would expect the phone to always take photos at the 50 megapixel resolution, right? Well, there is a catch. If you zoom in at the 50 megapixel setting, let's zoom in five times, you'll notice that your photos have been downgraded to 12 megapixel at the five times zoom. And this is even though we had the resolution set to 50 megapixels. Well, this is because the phone is using the three times telephoto camera and I can prove that by moving my finger onto the three times tele lens. However, if you still want a 50 megapixel photo at 5 times zoom, you want to head on into the camera assistant once again and then tap on higher resolution settings and enable upscale digital zoom. So now the phone is going to upscale the photo back to 50 megapixels even though we are taking the photo at the 5 times zoom. As you can see, the photo turns out to be 50 megapixels. Now, even though these are upscaled photos, they do have quite a bit of detail in them and you'll be able to zoom in or crop them quite a bit without any loss in quality. So this is a feature that you must enable if you are taking photos at the 50 megapixel setting. Now, you might be thinking that when you are taking a photo at the 3 times telephoto zoom, the phone is actually using the 3 times telephoto lens. Well, that is actually not true. The thing is, depending on the lighting situation, sometimes the phone is gonna end up using the main camera instead of actually using the 3 times telephoto camera. And I can prove that by moving my finger onto the 3 times telephoto camera, and you can see that we are still getting an image. So that means the phone is using the main camera even though we have got the three times telephoto option selected. This is actually a great feature of the camera because it will automatically optimize and pick the lens to prioritize picture quality. But many people find this feature annoying. 
So what we can do is head on into the camera assistant and disable the automatic lens switching from over here. Now the phone is going to pick the lens that you select from the camera UI. So as you can see, we've got the three times telephoto camera selected and the phone is actually using the three times telephoto camera. And I can show it to you by moving my finger on the three times telephoto lens. So there you go. And I've taken a photo in the same lighting situation with the automatic lens switching enabled and then disabled. And yes, I did clean the lenses before taking these photos. And shockingly, the photo taken without the auto lens switching enabled turned out to be better. It's a bit darker, but the overall quality is better. You can clearly see it in the texture right here and also in the face of the golden retriever. And hey, you can always increase the brightness in the photo editor. So the only downside of this is that you get slightly darker preview in the viewfinder compared to when you've got the setting enabled. But you'll notice that the brightness improves substantially after you take the photo. And the photo is also of higher quality. So it's totally worth switching the automatic lens switching off. So you might have noticed that the camera takes a photo when you tap and lift your finger. See that? You actually have to lift your finger and then the camera takes a photo. Now, if you want to increase the responsiveness of the camera, head on into the camera assistant and switch on quick tap shutter. Once enabled, your phone will take a photo as soon as your finger touches the shutter button. This kind of gives you a feeling that the camera is being more responsive. But this is a personal choice. If you like it, keep it on. If you don't, switch this setting off. Now, you might be wondering, how am I able to get the camera to run in full screen? Well, this is because I've set the aspect ratio to full, which takes photos in the 7 is to 6 aspect ratio for the main screen and 22.9 aspect ratio on the cover screen. I don't really recommend that you take photos in the full aspect ratio. I recommend setting this to 16 is to 9 or 4 is to 3 because these two aspect ratios are going to give you the best compatibility with social media and your PC. I actually have a dedicated video about aspect ratios on Samsung phones and I highly recommend that you go and check out that video once you are done watching this one. I'd also like to go over the Samsung camera UI and tell you some settings that you should change. And the camera UI on the cover as well as on the main screen is pretty much the same. The only difference is that some of the UI elements are in a different spot. But mostly it is the same thing. So we'll switch back to the cover screen because it's easier to demonstrate. Alright, so this bottom row contains your camera modes. By default, you've got three modes. Portrait, Photo and Video. But all of the interesting stuff is inside the More tab. So you've got the manual modes, which are the pro and pro video and night mode is here as well. So what I would recommend is customizing this bottom row, which contains your camera modes. This way you'll have easy access to the camera modes that you use frequently. So the way you customize is by dragging and dropping the camera modes from the more tab down to the bottom row. Once you get a camera mode onto this row, you can place it wherever you want. And when you are done, tap on save. And that's how you customize the camera modes. And the same changes are also going to reflect on the main screen. As you can see, now we've got night mode on the main screen. So now let's go over some of the settings that you should change. So what you want to do is head on into the camera settings and scroll down to shooting methods. Inside, you want to enable the floating shutter button option. And this is going to allow you to pull the shutter button out and place it anywhere on the screen. Very useful if your finger can't reach the main camera shutter button. Oh, and by the way, you'll need to change this setting separately for the main screen. So what you want to do is on the main screen, again, head on into the camera settings and then shooting methods and enable the floating shutter button option. And I think this setting is more useful and functional on the main screen because of the large size of the main screen. And having the camera shutter button at the location of your choice is very useful because you can hold the phone any way you like. Okay, so we're back in the camera settings and this time you want to scroll down and tap on settings to keep and switch on the selfie angle setting. This will make the phone remember the selfie angle that you set for the front facing camera. 
It always starts with a slightly zoomed in view, but once you enable the setting, you can switch this to wide and the phone is gonna remember the setting that you have set. Very useful, right? Okay, so another thing that you want to do is, in the camera settings, tap on intelligent optimization and inside, enable the scene optimizer. And this is going to automatically optimize the colors and contrast in the pictures that you're going to take. Next, head on into the video mode and tap here to change the resolution from full HD 30 FPS to 4K 60 FPS. This is going to give you the best video quality possible. However, the downside is that you won't be able to switch between the cameras while you are recording a video. This is an unfortunate limitation of the Z Fold 6. Meanwhile, the S24 Ultra can switch between all of its cameras while recording in 4K 60. You know what? I think if Samsung wants, they can bring this feature to the Z Fold 6. I mean, it's got the same chipset as the S24 Ultra and all three cameras are capable of recording in 4K at 60fps. So with this limitation, if you want to record in 4K 60, you'll need to pick the camera lens before you hit the record button. But if you want to switch between all three cameras while recording the video, drop the frame rate down to 30 fps and now you'll be able to switch between the cameras while recording a video unfortunate limitation but yeah it is what it is and finally one last thing that you can do is head on into the more tab and download the expert raw app from over here the main advantage of this is that you get linear dng 16 bit raw output along with full manual control over all three cameras Plus it's also got the astro photography mode and there are many advantages of taking photos in RAW. Mainly you get more flexibility when it comes to editing. By the way, you can import these directly into Adobe Lightroom for editing. Now I'm not a professional photographer so I'm not gonna pretend I know everything about Lightroom and RAW but I will say that a little editing goes a long way. So check this out, we have gone from a crappy looking, unusable photo to something that is a little bit more presentable and I've barely spent about 5 minutes tweaking the settings in Adobe Lightroom. So if you are into professional photography and you know your way around Lightroom, then the Expert RAW app is a game changer. And we're gonna end the video here because it's already 12 plus minutes long. So guys, if you have enjoyed the video and if you have found this video to be helpful, make sure to hit the like button, share the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified about my upcoming videos. This is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.